we made the trip down here to Throttle Junkie Tooney in Concord, North Carolina. Got the car all strapped down on the dyno. We got the cell nice and topped off. We got about 10 gallons of Ignite Red. It's the E90 race gas that I will be running. And uh, Nick had to go in and update the firmware since it's been probably two years since my car has been on the dyno. So before he can even go in and look at the tune, much less make changes to it, he had to make some updates in the computer. So we've got everything hooked up. Uh, the firmware just finished. So now Nick is going to go in and start editing and uh, just kind of get us a base map so we can start making some pulls on this thing. Uh, we found out that the map sensor I was running was a one bar map sensor which is fine for a naturally aspirated setup there are some part numbers on here and I could never get them to pull up anything but uh, the computer showed us that this is a one bar map so that's only good for you know atmospheric pressure and a setup so once you add boost this sensor is like whoa what's going on and stuff gets weird so we got a two bar map sensor on the way and uh, we changed up some wiring for the fuel pumps because Inside my surge tank, I have two pumps, and one is running all the time. The second one, we didn't know if we were going to run on a stage, you know, like when the engine sees X amount of boost, it'll kick on or RPM. Uh, but we ended up running, you know, based on Nick's advice and what they've used in the past, uh, to just have both pumps running all the time. So we wired that up, and once the map sensor gets here, we should be ready to make some pulls. sad end to what started out as a really sick day uh, it is 8 30 p.m and we have the same situation here so you can see the slave and the snout on it is snapped off again and we were running this 
it's the old school Camaro uh, pilot bushing and unbeknownst to me the Samsonis transmission has to use the uh, newer style Camaro bearing it's like a sealed bearing it's larger diameter and it it doesn't sit as far into the crankshaft so basically what was happening was this bearing was too deep inside the crankshaft and that input shaft was not engaging it so the input shaft is just kind of wobbling around inside here like this under load and it snapped it off and this was just bouncing around so we are headed home we being Chris and I back up north and uh, we are going to get some new parts tomorrow morning we're gonna drive back down and I'll leave the car here at Throttle Junkie overnight Nick was nice enough to let us make a mess and use all his tools but we will be back tomorrow and we will get this thing running and get it tuned this is why it pays to have good people in your life and good people in your program uh, the man here at Throttle Junkie very accommodating very understanding very helpful so if you are in the North Carolina area or anywhere around here and you need tuning done, this guy's the best in the business, in my opinion, because this thing went from running really rough to, like, butter so fast. So I'm looking forward to, uh, to seeing what it'll do tomorrow at full potential, and we'll see you guys then. Day two begins. I uh, just got back here to Throttle Junkie Tuning. I went by my local Chevy dealership and got the proper pilot bearing it's in the freezer right now but as you can see we are back here and we are going to give this another shot Chris is on his way now with the new slave cylinder throw out bearing combo we're gonna put all this stuff in here get it back together and we're gonna make some more holes that's gonna work and it's gonna be awesome like I said yesterday this is the bronze bushing the older style uh, that we were running in the end of the crank and this is the new pilot bearing actually a sealed bearing or this is just a solid piece of bronze uh, and this sits you know like say this far in the end of the crankshaft and this one's gonna sit right about here so the shaft was just kind of dangling right in front of this bearing here or bushing here and now we'll actually have the shaft resting on this inner seal raised there and that's what we need so we're gonna get this pressed in and put everything back together okay so the car is fully assembled uh, all the drivetrain components are back in from front to back. Uh, we bled the clutch. We have a pedal it's disengaging. Everything's working good so far. Uh, but we had one more problem, and that was the throwout bearing slash slave cylinder was overextending. So basically, we pushed the pedal down to the point of where the clutch disengaged, and there was still like seven inches of pedal travel beyond that point. And so what happens is the slave cylinder pushes into the clutch, and this is all it needs, but you push it that far and you tend to separate the, uh, the seals in the bearing. So uh, that's just one more preventative thing we're doing. Chris is in there welding in uh, a custom stop, adjustable stop that he made, and it should fix our problem.
<laughs> How's your first 500 horsepower car? <laughs> I don't even know what to say besides the dude, like literally. I am like straight up trembling right now. Like, obviously when I'm in this car, I'm so comfortable that it didn't even really feel weird. But like, now that I'm out of it, like, oh my God. Like, I, I'm pretty sure the last pass coming up here, that was only like halfway through third, and I was flying. So, even the amount of power or speed I picked up, just hitting it in first right there. I mean, it just blew the tires off, obviously, but. <sighs> well, ladies and gentlemen, I guess we didn't quite make what we were anticipating, but we built a river and it runs great and I cannot complain a bit. All in all, a good day. Shout out to Nick, Rattle Junkie Tuning.